Hello and welcome to the two-man power trip of wrestling on today's podcast. We have a very special guest. He's, of course, the former WCW World Heavyweight Champion, believe it or not. He is yeah. also the former head writer of WCW and the WWF. He is Mr. Vince Russo. Vince, welcome back. How are you doing today, sir? What is going on, John? How are you doing, my friend? Doing good. Doing good. I can't complain, but I don't know what's going on with your former boss, Vince McMahon. How, how he's doing? Crazy, right? Uh, I, well, I mean, I don't think it's crazy at all. I think it's all just caught up with them. And, uh, you know, bro, now that it, it looks like it's reached a federal level, man, I, I, I think the guy's in severe trouble because they're, they're coming from many different areas. It's not just hush money. It's, you know, now it's insider trading. Now it's, you know, did he pay the, uh, the hush money out of, you know, company funds, which it sounds like he did. There are many, many, many different levels to this now. And, uh, man, for him to skate on all of them, I don't see that happening, man. And I was just talking to somebody, they were saying, and I kind of don't understand. It, I don't get it perfectly, but they were saying if he even paid it with his own money, if you take your own money, let's say, you know, out of nowhere and you put it into the company and the company makes these payments, it's almost like you're giving the company extra money, making them worth more. But where is that money coming from? And why is it, you know, you know what I mean? Like, where is that money going to? Yeah, so even and, if you and, and they've already said, bro, they've got to completely redo the books to yeah. figure in $14.5 million. And bro, here, here's the one telling thing to me, because a lot of people were not around then. But uh, in the early 90s, bro, when that steroid uh, trial was going down, Vince was screaming from the top of the mountain his innocence. Bro, nobody has said that one time here. <laughs> so Vince has not said, I'm innocent and I'm going to be, I'm, that's going to be proven in a court of law. Stephanie has not said it. Nobody has said the word innocent. To me, that speaks volumes, bro. If I'm accused of something and I'm innocent, you're going to know I'm innocent. But not one person, not one person from that family or that camp has said that word. I mean, come on, bro. Weinstein said he was innocent. Bill Cosby said he was innocent. R. Kelly said he was innocent. They all said they were innocent. Bro, nobody has said they, they're innocent. I wonder, like, with McDivitt, because McDivitt was supposed to, Jerry McDivitt was supposed to retire. So I wonder what he's thinking right now. It's like, oh, holy God. shit. Like, yeah, oh, my God. Poor dude, man. Poor yeah, he, he's out of retirement. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Like, holy yeah. crap. Yeah. But think about it. It's like, what could Vince even say right now? Because, like you said, it's coming from so many different angles. Like, the yeah. federal government is now involved, and SEC is involved, and, and all and these. that's why I don't think, bro, like, when you talk about Jerry McDivitt, what a great, great, unbelievable attorney he was. But, man, in this case... Uh, you know, I mean, bro, supposedly, you know, that there are pictures there. Like, I, 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 I can't imagine, bro. I just can't imagine him skating all of this. Funny, imagine if like that's your client, like, you know, eccentric billionaire, crazy guy. Can't keep him under control. It's like, uh -huh. all right, we got this locked up. We got this steroids thing locked up. Oh, then this happened. Oh, the tanning yeah. salon. Oh, you know what I mean? It's like, yep. Unbelievable. I mean, don't get me wrong, bro. V Vince has made that guy a zillion. Oh dollars. God, yeah. Oh God, yeah. But uh, oh my God, bro. Yeah, th there there were probably uh, many sleepless nights in the life of Jerry McDivitt, bro. No doubt about it. Oh, he, obviously, great lawyer. He's hardly ever yeah. lost cases for them. But I mean, this this is a tough one uh, to, yeah. to to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. So with Vince, is there a chance? after all this is said and done, like, could he actually return? Cause he's still technically the owner. He's still, bro, technically he's, he's still running the company. They, 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 they just had to get him out of there, bro. I, I said this weeks ago, there's no way the guy can still be around female talent and meeting with female. There's no way you, you, ha he's, he's got to get out of there. So that's exactly what happened, bro. They took it. He's, he's not at the shows anymore. He's not in the office anymore. But if you don't think he's not running every single asset, uh, you know, a, a fat faucet of that company from from Boca Raton, wherever the hell he is, bro, every single thing is still going through Vince. Everything. And this is not uh, Triple H's creative. Like every single thing is still going through Vince. 
great. I was reading all these funny things online. Like, you know, these guys on Twitter, they know absolutely nothing, but they pretend they know something about wrestling. They're like, oh, great job by Triple H on Raw. And then I read Vince yeah. Vince wrote that show. <laughs> bro, bro, you know how many times you know how many times Vince's phone is ringing right now? Give, give right. me a break. He got out of he got out of there because he had to. You know, like I said, bro, what Vince is going to tell tell Liv Morgan? Yeah, Liv, Liv, I need to meet with you. I'll see you in my office in 15 minutes. That that ain't going to fly, bro. You you right. got to get him out of there. And they did that. But if you think he's not running the company, like you, you, you're just a moron. I was laughing because obviously Vince wrote that show. They say the last week before he quote unquote left. So they were using his show. So it wasn't Triple H creative. And then they're like, oh, Roman Reigns, uh, he, he ripped Vince or whatever. It was just an ad lib line. Who, you know, who's your daddy? The old Pedro Martinez thing. Uh, you know, it was just an ad lib funny line. It wasn't Triple H getting his revenge. I mean, that's his father in law who, who he's like a disciple of. So he's it's, not going to say anything bad about Vince. It's so ridiculous, bro. I mean, v v Vince has all the puppets in place from Stephanie to Hunter. And and it's business as usual. He's just not physically there. You think Nick Khan is putting stuff together to sell the company co-CEO now. So he's got a lot of power to try to sell it. I, you know, bro, I, I got to be honest with you. Say this does not turn out Vince's way. Okay. I cannot see Vince McMahon allowing the WWE to go on without him running it. Yeah. So if, if if Vince McMahon like is found guilty, bro, if there is jail time, whatever the consequences are, I can see Vince definitely, definitely selling the company at that point. Ooh. So basically, if you know he's, he's the owner technically, but if they don't let him come back, well, I'm gonna sell it and 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 that's that'll be my way out. Yes, that's what I think. That's I, I I don't think Vince McMahon would ever let anybody else run the WWE unless he died. Right. Even not even his own daughter. Yeah. Nope. What do you think it's worth? Because I was reading it could be worth up to six billion dollars. Do you I think like, you I get mean, that maybe, kind of valuation for it? Maybe. But I mean, I think the value goes down every day. I think the more and more and more this stuff comes out, the value goes down. I, could it have been worth that at its peak? That very, very possible. But I think as this thing progresses, it's got less and less value to it. It was funny because the last time we spoke, you said, oh, Pandora's box is about to be open. You were right. I mean, boy, yeah, did it open. We still haven't seen nothing yet, bro. I'm telling you, you know, this HBO gimmick is coming out, real sports. Bro, we ain't seen nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, bro, we haven't seen anything. Bro, for Vince McMahon to agree to retire and not be seen, bro, there's really, really, really damaging stuff coming down. And I'm not just talking about allegations. I'm talking proof. I'm talking paper trail. I'm talking hidden recordings. I'm to who who knows, but for him to take such a drastic step, he's trying to get ahead of it, bro. But for him to make the decision to say what he said, it, th there's there's some really bad stuff. And once that train starts rolling then people start coming out of the woodworks with stories too so yep. you'll hear even more stuff yeah absolutely bro yep and some of the divas obviously we don't know their names because the nda but I'm, I'm sure maybe their friends or something will come out and say just like the girl with the paralegal her friend came out and kind of yeah. ratted them out yeah absolutely bro yeah, yeah no doubt about it yeah no doubt about it. bro listen it's karma man it's gonna catch up with you I, i'm i'm telling you bro you you do bad things you act in a miss in a in an inappropriate way it's gonna come back man it, it might not be a month it might not be a year it might be 10 years it might be 20 it's going to come back this guy bro at the end of the day did a lot of unethical immoral things i'm i'm just happy bro that this stuff it doesn't appear to have been going on while I was there. Everything I'm hearing is like 205, 206. Um, you know, thank God I left at the end of 99. I don't believe any of this was going on back then. You didn't uh, detect anything? I no, guess. no, uh-uh, no. Seemed like around 05, 06 was when supposedly him and Linda split up. So I don't know if that like led to... Uh... 
you know, him being it, it just like that, or if he was, was always like it, that. It was around that time, and then it was around the diva search, and then you know, it, there was a just a funky period there. And bro, I'll tell you this too, like John, like all those angles he did with all those divas where there was you know sex and all that was creepy, bro. I, I, I'm John. Listen, I had the book at three companies. I, I could have written a million stories like that if I wanted to. The the woman would have had to go along with it. I'm the freaking booker. I would have never in my wildest dreams ever put a talent in that type of position. And he did that over and over and over again. And bro, that was that, that was just creepy, man. Like I, I would have never. I mean, bro, look, look at all my booking. Look at when I was an on-air character. There was never anything, you know, like that. That 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 was creepy to me, man. Some of that stuff with like Trish, like looking back, it's like, whoa, he had her like, you know, basically stripping to the bra and panties and crawling around like a dog and and stuff. It's like, whoa, I wonder, like, like you know, what I mean, as you really look into it further, oh, it's like, absolutely, man, ab ab absolutely was making out with them. Yeah, and yeah. We, Tori Wilson, oh, yeah. I, I I could never ever. God, bro, I could never imagine doing that ever. It's funny. It's always like the hottest ones, like Trish, Tori, yeah, right. Sa Sable, uh, Stacy Keebler. It was always like the most gorgeous ones that he would have the storylines with, too. That, that that bro, that's power, man. That's that's power. You could make anybody do anything out of fear of losing their job. Was anything going on when you were there though with Sable? Because remember, she was complaining of a lot of stuff. I know there was people shitting in her bags and stuff like that, but was she ever complaining about Vince? Oh, I never. No, no. I mean, not to my knowledge. That 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 was that was never an issue. Uh, to my knowledge, the issue with Sable was that the uh, you know was much much more old school back then, and the fact that a woman was getting television time and taking their spot. That that was the issue. Um, I know Sable sued the company, um, and that was like all stuff after I left and stuff. But when I was there, like Vince's behavior uh, was was never at a you know question. To me, though, if anything did happen with Sable, I'm sure Brock Lesnar wouldn't be buddy buddy with Vince like he is. You know what I mean? Like oh, Brock yeah. would have killed him already. Yeah. Bro, Mark Merrill would have killed him. Like, right. my, 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 bro, Mark Merrill was a tough dude. Mark Merrill. Oh yeah. Mark Merrill would have knocked Vince out if oh, he easily. anything like that was going easily. on. Easily. Yeah. Yep. So let's get to the topic at hand here. The subject that we want to talk about: Royal Rumble 1998, all the way back on January 18th. Well, we don't want to talk about it. Larry wants. It. <laughs> Larry, yeah. Let, yeah let, let, let's make that perfectly clear. I have zero interest whatsoever in talking about this, John. You love 1998 WBF. Are you crazy? Uh, I couldn't, bro. I swear to God. Uh, I, when you talk about 1998 Royal Rumble, I, I am not BSing you. I could not tell you one thing that was on that show. So you, oh, you're, 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 yeah. you're going to go through the show. We'll go yeah. through it all. But yeah. like, if you asked me, Vince, name one match from 1998 Royal Rumble, I would say the Royal Rumble. And then right, you would right. say, who, who <laughs> went over? I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming Austin. Yes, I'm, of course. Austin, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming yeah. Austin went over. That's all. That's all I remember. So January eighteenth, ninety eight, San Jose, California, the San Jose Arena. The attendance eighteen thousand five hundred forty two. Sure. Now I remember a little bit. I remember being at the San Jose. I remember it being a really big show. I remember some celebrities stopping backstage to say hello. I don't remember exactly who, but now I do. When you say San Jose, now I do remember it was a very big show. Mike Tyson in the house, by the way, for this one. Okay. Uh, pain is just a four letter word is the tagline, the buy rate 350 K, which is pretty good, but it's almost like you guys are going to be building up to huge buy rates. Cause WrestleMania, we talked about before was, I think was 750. So, I mean, you're starting to build up to, to, to the bigger buy rates, but 350 is pretty good for this part, especially because WCW also has a, has a pay-per-view this month as well. So, I mean, 
not bad at all. It's pretty good. Mike Tyson is in the house. He'll eventually have a, a, a little presser, not presser, but you know, they interview him and he has like a little promo. He calls him stone. I don't know if you remember. He calls him, I do, uh, I do what the hell did he call him? Cold stone, cold yes, stone. I do remember. I do remember that. Yes. yes. Like cold stone creamery, the yes. ice cream place. Yes. Yes. That I do remember. Yes. People I remember were thinking like, Oh, he doesn't know wrestling. He just got so excited yeah, that oh, that's yeah. what he said. He knew wrestling. He was a huge he fan. Huge absolutely fan. Absolutely. Loved it. Absolutely loved it, respected it. I mean, did not look down his nose at it. Absolutely. Bischoff always says, as soon as he saw Tyson pop up with you guys, he's like, okay, this is a game changer for you guys. Did you sense that too? He's like, oh, shit, we got Mike Tyson involved. Not, 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 at, not, not to the, um, not to the level it was. Not, not to the level it was. That I did not see. I, bro, the only game changer I saw when you talk about Bischoff was, you know, I watched the night Hogan joined the NWA and, and I knew WWE was doomed. I, I, I knew we were absolutely doomed. It was a big deal to have Tyson there, but I never thought it would have the impact that it wound up having. Two years of dominance for the NWO when uh, when Hogan turned heel. No, no doubt about that. It was awesome. The Mike Tyson stuff is just surprising because he's controversial as hell at this point. You know, biting people's ears. Yeah, uh, yeah. Getting, you know, and bro, and, and, charge. And, and that's where, like, I'll give Vince 1,000% credit. It was all his idea. At the time, Tyson was banned from pay-per-views. So in Vince's mind, well, they could... They could pay to see him on this pay-per-view. So that that was all generated from Vince, and he was spot on with it, bro. As the writer, you know, and, and booking the shows and writing the shows, are you thinking to yourself, oh shit, Mike Tyson, like we, you know, what could we do here? I mean, this is like a great controversial That's figure, awesome. but there's be so many eyes on him. You know what I mean? No, not really, man. No? Like, it's wow. just, honestly, bro, it's like it's just another character on the show. You you want to use them to you know, a hundred percent of, of capability. There's no question about that. You want to get every, every ounce out of it, but I mean, you kind of just, you know, was, is it, it was another character on the show, man. Really. Was Vince a boxing fan at all? Because I've always heard he's not a fan of sports except for football, but he doesn't really pay attention. Like, is he a Tyson fan? Bro. I think Vince's motivation was, I think Vince wanted to manage Tyson's career. I, I, I really believe that without a shadow of a doubt. I really feel it was twofold. I, I, I thought it was, you know, Vince thought Tyson would spike the pay-per-view buy. And I also thought Vince wanted to get into business with Mike Tyson. I always, always believe that. And at this point... Really, WBF, WWE does a good job on pay-per-view at this point, too. Really, WBF is like what people think of. It's almost like WBF created the genre of pay-per-view, and then Mike Tyson kind of like broke the mold and broke the ceiling of like the being the draw. So Vince, WBF, and Tyson pay-per-view, it just it goes together to me. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Yep. Do you think that Vince does anything else Joe? it's like sidebar here but does he do any hobbies or any like what you know what i mean like but nothing that's a joke about him retiring what, what, okay bro he's retired what, what what is he doing bro is he reading is he walking on the beach kicking up sand is he playing bridge is he fishing give me a break the man doesn't know anything but the wwe bro that's why when i hear the word vince mcmahon in retirement it makes me laugh the the, the, the only thing that the only, the only time I will believe Vince McMahon and retirement is when he's doing time. <laughs> yes, okay. Now he's retired, bro. Hunter's not going to be able to call him in a, in in a jail cell, bro. Now he's retired, but now it's it's a joke, bro. You ever see those movies and the TV shows where, like, the boss, the crime boss, is literally has the phone in prison, oh, or he's yeah, doing absolutely. he's doing business? From yeah. I could see him in prison, and be like Kevin yeah. Dunn, like I want this, you know, yeah, I want no, this happening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, bro. Yeah. Funny that people online are attacking like Bruce and Kevin Dunn. I guess they don't like Kevin Dunn's production, and I guess he said he didn't like Becky Lynch's accent or so. People like bro, attacking, but isn't that crazy? They attack these guys morons. that they don't know. They they're don't know these guys. They're, they're yeah. absolute. They're absolute morons, and they they have no idea what Kevin Dunn brings to the table. They got no idea the knowledge of Bruce. You know, bro, listen, Bruce and I have had our up and downs. Bruce is a political animal. I, I mean, there's no question about that. But that doesn't 
uh, you know, that doesn't erase his knowledge and what what he's good at and what he brings to the table. It doesn't erase any of that. And to to if you think you're just going to replace guys like Bruce and Kevin, you're out of your freaking mind. The, the WWE would not be what it is right now without Kevin Dunn, bro. Kevin, Kevin Dunn's importance to that company is just as important as Vince McMahon's. I laugh at that kind of stuff because I'm oh, like, wow. wow, just because they don't like his camera cuts, they're like yeah. like to go after him. Yeah. And oh, he had an opinion. He didn't think Becky was attractive right. or he totally didn't like her accent. That's TV. That's I mean, you see that exactly. everywhere in TV. Absolutely. Like, oh, this person's not attractive. I don't like this accent. Like, that's TV for you. Absolutely, bro. It's all about ratings and it's all about numbers. And that that's his opinion. I mean, what why why are you getting so freaking upset over one guy's opinion? crazy that people don't realize like okay the guy has been around even bruce too for 40 years the amount of knowledge and experience that these yep. guys have it's yep. like through the roof Absolutely. and and these guys aren't being charged with like sexual allegations so right. that has nothing to do with vince so it's like yep. why are you attacking these guys it just doesn't make sense they don't they, bro they don't know they're, just, they're, they're morons i mean people that are following the the Meltzers and the you know, the Johnsons and the Sean Ross Saps, they're, they're just absolutely clueless, bro. The, 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 those people have a clue. Unless you've been in there, unless you know the personalities, bro, you don't know shit. Do you also hate that these random people are rooting for people to lose their jobs, too? That's kind of strange. Absolutely. Bruce literally uprooted his life from Houston to, to Connecticut. Like, oh, oh, good. Hopefully he loses. Oh, what? Absolutely. So now he's going to move back to Houston? I, 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 don't, I don't want any. Look, no, I, bro, I, I, listen. I, I, I don't want to say I don't want anybody to lose their job, bro. If you're guilty of the things Vince are guilty of, yeah, bro, you should right. lose your job. There's no question about it. If you didn't perform, yeah, you should lose your job. If you didn't deliver, yeah, you should lose your job. But to lose your job because I don't like you, oh, my God, bro, please give me a break, man. Watch WB and watch AEW. You could tell the production value from Kevin Dunn's point of view. I mean, it's the best. It's the yep. best of anything I've seen. Yep. And it's, you know, it's way better. Than, look at UFC. It shits on UFC, which is, yep. you know, a billion dollar. I mean, his production value is better than everybody else by a mile. No doubt about it, bro. No doubt. No doubt. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Kevin Dunn fan. He never did anything to me. He never caused me a problem. We always worked well together. I'm never going to say a bad thing about that guy. Now, may, maybe other people had other experiences with him that I didn't and that I don't know about. I'm just talking about my working relationship with him over a period of time. I don't have one negative thing to, to say about the guy. Now, the Royal Rumble, in essence, is a lot of Pat Patterson, right? Like, I mean, I know he created it, but is he involved in this one? Like every year he comes in and books the, the Royal Rumble? Yes. Yes. He's definitely involved. Yes. What does that entail for you? Like you have to work with him hand in hand, like for the show? No, not, a, not at all. I just know what I need to finish to be. I mean, that's, so, that's, 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 that's pretty much it. Like kind of, kind of when you, when you're talking about the writing, the, the important thing in the writing is the, the last four guys and what you need to finish to be as far as the laying out of the match and the order and, that's that's all on the agent and the wrestlers. What is his role though, or responsibility? Like, what what is his what is he doing? Like Pat, when he comes in and he's booking the Royal Rumble, laying out the, the entire thing: who comes when, uh, who gets eliminated by who, uh, literally laying out the whole thing from start to finish. When he's doing that, though, like, is he with the writers? Is he with Vince? Is he with the wrestlers? Like, what? Like, where is he? He's with the wrestlers. Vince has nothing to do with this. Pat is handling this whole thing. So Pat will have all the wrestlers there. All 30 guys will be there. And Pat will go through the order, who's eliminating who, how they're getting eliminated. So Pat is there with all the participants of the match. Vince is not there. With Pat, it seems like that is a really, I don't know, like a really big thing. It's, it's like, okay, this guy comes in here. Who you know, eliminates him? Yeah. Like, that, it's a lot. It's like a mathematic think. equation, bro. Like, seriously, seriously. And that's why I never in a million years would ever take credit for that. We, 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 this is who the final four are. This is what the finish needs to be. This is who's going over. That's it. 
to me, I always kind of get confused. I remember years ago, I, I was asking like Ted DiBiase about this, like, Hey Ted, like when you're in the Royal rumble, how do you like, how do you know? He said he only knew like who he was eliminating and who yeah. he was eliminated by. So yeah. there's no complication for the wrestler, but for Pat, it's 30. You know what I mean? The guy, he makes yeah, it very simple. Bro, don't, don't get me wrong. He he's, he's writing out a roadmap. I mean, he's he's writing this all out. But, yeah, absolutely, bro. They know who they're eliminating and who's eliminating them. Easy to work with, Pat? Oh, God, bro, please. I mean, Pat, I, you know, I mean, bro, when I was um, when I was working with Pat, it, you know, th there was a personal relationship. Uh, you know, Pat and Bruce were very, very close. I was close to Bruce. So I kind of got brought into that Pat circle. So there were many times, bro, I, you know, I hung out with Pat and his, his partner, Louie, um, many, many, many times. It, it, it was beyond just working, uh, you know, at TV with Pat. I mean, I, I was with Pat many, many times on a personal level. So to me, everyone always says it's his baby, the thing he created. To, like Vince gives him so much respect and so much is like, OK, here's your baby. But this is the build up to WrestleMania. So it's so important. Yeah, absolutely, bro. But he, but Vince obviously 100% trusted and never questioned Pat. This is probably to a lot of people the second biggest pay per view of the year, even over SummerSlam, because it's the build up to WrestleMania. Usually it's going to find out who what the main event of WrestleMania might be. Did you guys sense that when you were putting the show together too? Like, oh, this is the second most important show. We got to treat I'm it just, like that or no? Just, just another show, man. Really? Just as important as the Raw the next night. Wow. Yeah. So to us fans, it's like, oh, this is the biggest thing, but not to the staff, not to the writer. Not when you're writing 52 shows a year, man. Every 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 show is important, bro. Like really, every show is important. And the fact that it was Royal Rumble to me, it didn't mean anything. It, it, it I I I was more focused, bro, on what we were doing the next night than really the event itself. Do you get to pick who's in the Royal Rumble match at all, or no? I, I mean, ju just the main players that we need in there, uh, but all 30 people. No, absolutely not. Is that Pat's decision? No, that's that that's Vince's and talent relations. Pretty much Jr. or Bruce, wh whoever was doing it at the time, probably Jr. Because this one is different. You really only have 27 guys technically in this because Foley is, you know, dude, love cactus, Jack, mankind, three different guys. So it's a little bit different on this, but that was something that unpredictable, obviously, but that's like, I think something that a lot of people remember for this match, like the three phases of Foley, he's in the match three different times. Which is it's so so cool and so awesome. Like you know, you'll 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 never have a situation like that again. That's how special Mick Foley was. But that's cool, bro. Like that's that's really cool. Whose idea is that? Probably mine. Do you remember like pitching it or do you remember like this is what we should do and like everybody was happy with it? Oh, there, there was like people don't understand. There, there was no pitching <laughs> like me. I, I don't know if Fed was with me at this point. I think he was. Yeah, yeah he was. Okay. We, we, we we write the show. We write the show and present it to Vince. We don't pitch anything. We write the show. We, you know, bro, well, bro, it, it's actually well, it's actually twofold. Let, let me be honest with you. Ed and I get together. We write the entire show, the entire show, everything in the show. Now we go to Vince's house, and I wouldn't say we pitch him the show because in our minds, this is the show. We're the writers. You pay us to write the show. This is the show. So I wouldn't say we pitch the show. We present the show. So now we present the show to Vince, Vince will stay 100% within the parameters of our show. No major changes, no switching things around, but literally tweak something here, tweak something there, punch something up here, but work within the parameters of the written show. That's why it has sucked since we've left because nobody's ever done that before. And, and, and they're leaving it up to Vince to come up with the majority of the show. Vince never had to come up with anything. We handed him the show. He worked off of that show, little tweaks here and there. 
uh, punch things up, uh, you know, did his best to make it as good as it could be, but he didn't have to write anything from scratch. That's the difference, bro. That That's why when we left, there was a major change. Very memorable. The three faces of Foley are in it. Do you think that in any way that that makes him look bad that he technically got tossed out three times or no? No, nah, not at all. It's 100% entertainment, man. 100% entertainment factor. But it's funny, like when you see like when WWE puts videos together, they always say, oh, the three face of Foley WrestleMania or uh, Royal Rumble 98. So it is kind of a, a very memorable moment that they still talk about to this day when they put the little video packages together. Yeah, because it'll something like that will probably not happen ever again. Who's going to come along as talented Mick Foley? Very true. Yeah. Are you still friendly with Mick? And yeah, yeah we, we still DM here and there, me and Mick. Yeah. So obviously... The Royal Rumble is going to be a big part of the show, but there's some matches before that. We'll get into that. Big Van Vader, well, really just Vader here, defeated the artist formerly known as Goldust with Luna in about eight minutes. Pretty good match here. The funny thing is, what the hell is Goldust wearing? I know he's the artist formerly known. He is just like, who's picking out his outfit? He he's is, in like he leather is. and, and oh, like, he, oh, man. He is 100% he is. He is, he is, uh, he is being as bizarre as Goldust can be, uh, 100% him as far as wardrobe goes. Who created the artist formerly known as Goldust? Obviously, bro, I, off of Prince, we, but. We, we did, bro, because they wouldn't let us do Goldust anymore, man. They, you know, they kind of yanked the carpet out from under him. They yanked the carpet out from under us, and uh, we, we couldn't do it anymore, bro. So... You know, the, the character was so over, bro, that he all of a sudden couldn't be just something else. There had to be some type of a transitional period. So we kind of shot with it was the artist formerly known as Goldust. You know, Prince was, you know, hot at the time, you know, the whole nine yards. Yeah. You know, that's that's what we did. Why no Goldust? And who's who's like barring Goldust from being used? Too controversial? Advertisers and sponsors pulling out because they didn't understand the character. They did not like his controversial nature, I'm guessing. Yes, yes, yep. But the funny thing is the artist formerly known as Goldust is almost as controversial as Goldust. Yeah, it, you know? was, it was the whole homophobic thing, bro. That yeah. They could not handle because they didn't understand that it was an act. And, you know, he, he, he was playing on the homophobic fear of others. That's what he was doing. They, they, they couldn't grasp that concept. It was too deep for them to understand. So they looked at the angle as just being homophobic. Vader gets the win here. There's an interesting spot. Luna gets on his back, and he's about to do the Vader bomb off the rope, and he does it onto Goldust with her. So she almost like scorpions herself, where like her legs almost like like it looked like a, a vicious, vicious bump. I don't know if you remember that at all, or if you remember Luna getting hurt from that, but it it looked vicious as hell. I don't. I don't remember that at all. But I'm sure if it was that involved, I'm sure they probably rehearsed it a few times during the day. And she's tough. Luna, as hell. Luna was very athletic and very strong, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, she was an athlete. She had an athletic body. So that doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, Luna would be able to pull something like that off. She's uh, tough as nails. So I don't think she minded taking a Vader bump. Uh, you know? Not at all. Not at all. Probably she probably suggested it. Oh, yeah. I would I would believe that. So Vader here gets the win, but why never a push for Vader? Because we've seen him in Japan, huge star. I mean, a monumental guy. We see him in WCW, world champion for a year. I mean, he was dominant. He had great matches with you know, Sting and Flair, and he's got a feud with Hogan. So how come no big push for Vader in the WWE? Bro, at the top level of management, you know, Vince and Bruce and – he was like the brunt end of everybody's joke. And, and I don't know if it was because things he would say in a personal phone conversation or things he would say in a meeting. I, I, I don't know. But I can tell you that, you know, Bruce, Vince, you know, that level, Pat, they, they never took the guy seriously. And, and, and I, I, you know, and, and that probably is, is a reflection on the, the guy, you know, personally and who Leon White was, but they just they never took the guy personally. I remember when he was uh, arrested in Kuwait 
and he was scared shit and they were making a joke out of it. They weren't, they weren't returning his phone calls. They weren't getting back to him and they thought it was hysterical. They thought the fact that this guy was scared for his life was funny. So he, he, I, I don't know, bro. They, 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 for whatever reason, they never took the guy seriously. And when Vince feels that strongly about somebody and you know it, bro, you ain't going to fight that fight. You, 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 you're just not going to fight that fight because you know Vince has an image of this guy in his mind and he's not going to change it. Crazy to me because Vader's, I mean, he's just got dollar signs written all over him. He's an awesome uh, wrestler as far as that. He's got a good character. He could talk a little bit if you want to. He's intimidating as hell. He's scary as hell. A and legit no, and, and giant. He, and he never washed his gear. And, <laughs> and, and, and that could be part of it, bro. Like, seriously, bro, when, when Vader walked past you, he smelt like vomit. I mean, like vomit. Like, every time he walked by, you thought somebody vomited. He never washed his gear. Bro, something like that can be part of it. Because you got to remember, he was working with Sean a lot at the time. Yep. So if Sean is going to Vince, you know, will you tell this guy to wash his freaking gear or whatever? Now, now it becomes a running joke and a running gag. And now nobody takes Vader seriously. That's how wrestling works, bro. And I know he had issues with Shawn Michaels dating back to SummerSlam 96. He didn't do something in the match, and Michaels blew up and kicked him in the head, and so you're supposed to do this. Instead of just rolling with it and ad-libbing, he went nuts on him. Um, I know he was supposed to win the title, rumor, at Survivor Series 96. They gave it to Sid instead. Vader was just in a Survivor Series match, so it just always seemed like the Michaels connection wasn't good. And I know Vader had said that uh, Vince and, and HBK had a gay relationship together, so uh -huh. that definitely didn't help Vader. <laughs> you know, it didn't help his cause either, I'm sure. you know, bro, he's not the only one to have said that i mean right I, I, when i interviewed bundy bundy related to, uh to, to that suggested that but i i can't say i ever saw anything like that I, I i'd be lying i don't know like if he's just saying that but it that doesn't do him any favors obviously i mean that, mm -hmm. that, that's not going to help him politically no no and who knows he might have said that to vince right exactly and, yeah and, and that might be the answer to all your questions right you know? true you yep. know yep so the next match is a six-man tag match with Sonny as the guest referee. It's the Minis match. Max Mini, Mosaic, and Nova defeated Battalion El Torito and Tarantula. About eight-minute match. A Minis match. Who is booking the Bruce, Minis? Bruce and whatever the relationship is with AAA or wherever they're coming from. Yeah. That, that was all something, bro, I had no control over. You know, it was some it, it was contractual and we're doing business with this other company and they're going to give us their minis and blah, blah, blah. I, I, I always hated that shit, bro. I just always hated it. To me, it's like, OK, I know like the melters of the world and like the guys can say, oh, it's a good match, blah, blah, blah. Like no interest in it except for Sonny. You know what I mean? Like that'll yeah. keep your attention on the match. And, and, that's, obviously and, that's, the and that's why she was there. That's I was going to say, is that why she's the ref? Okay. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That to me, that's just funny. It's like the WBF, the attitude error. Oh, by the way, we're going to have Mexican minis wrestling. No, I agree. I agree with you a thousand percent, bro. No, no, nobody's no, no, me and Ed are not pitching Mexican minis. It's funny. It's like NWO, WCW. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I agree. Steve Austin. Oh, and the minis. Mike Titan and the minis. Like, yeah, I agree. It's like now you're going to go to TV 14 and what? You're going to do 24-7? <laughs> like, real? Okay, go ahead. Dana Brooke versus R-Truth. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't know. Just To me, it, it just didn't fit in at all. I agree. Like, no, weird, bro, yeah. I agree. I'm, I'm watching some of the older uh, Attitude Era shows now, and I think I'm right around this period, and the minis are on. Uh, and I agree with you, bro. I, I agree with you strange so then we have the rock defeating ken shamrock by dq to retain his intercontinental championship in 11 minutes pretty good match here the build-up was all about shamrock beating up the nation excuse me to get to the rock and then obviously you you know you dangle the carrot in front of shamrock and then he gets dq'd it's just one of the things where it seemed like that's what you guys were doing at the time it's like shamrock's getting ready getting ready he's going to beat the rock hates the rock dangle the carrot nope he gets dq'd because he can't control himself which was awesome for the character, bro, which was awesome for the character because, you know, the bottom line is as a shoot, nobody could beat him. 
but he winds up beating himself. And bro, that's a very true story, man. That's you, you see that in athletics all the time where, you know, you saw it with like a Trevor Bauer, uh, uh, you know, the giants on their team now have a uh, Carlos Rodon and these guys like lose their temper and lose it. And once they do, the, the game goes down the drain. So it, it's a very, very real story and was perfect for Ken Shamrock. The Rock at this point, obviously, he's an Intercontinental Champion. But to me, and we'll see later on the Royal Rumble, he's getting a, a big push because he'll be there at the end. But to me, it's like, okay, this guy, you got something here. To me, it's like, holy shit, like this guy is the future. But also, Shamrock was a big part of that, bro. They, they, they had a lot of matches leading oh, yeah. up to The Rock taking off. And Shamrock played a huge, huge, huge role in Rock getting over, in my opinion. Did you see A and E had a documentary on Austin versus The Rock, and they were kind of showing the few. I don't know if you you saw that or saw that 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 was on. Yeah, I didn't. I I, I don't watch stuff like that, but I just I, I just don't care. But I didn't see it. It was pretty good. It was well done. But I was just kind of watching some of the early stuff, like around this time period. I just noticed The Rock, his facial expressions are so funny. Like, remember, like he'll have the the beeper, and then it'll, it'll, like when that beeper says three sixteen, his face is like you could tell. Like, obviously, it says three sixteen on that beep. Like, it just yeah. his. Everything he did was just like over the top, but you're like enthralled by him. Yeah, absolutely. With that, he had it's the it factor, bro. He got it. He he got it. One thousand. You know, you know, bro. What do you think? I'm standing there with him, and I'm saying, okay, Rock. When when the when when the beeper goes off, this is gonna be your facial. No, bro. No, no. You don't need to tell him that stuff. That's a natural, bro. That's why to this day, I I, I got to tell you, you know. John, I get so pissed off when I see so many people with so many years in the wrestling business who are so ingrained in the bubble that they can't see how wrong things are on so many levels. He, but like, he, here's a perfect example. And, and th this is why nobody takes the wrestling business seriously. This is exactly why. You got this flair retirement angle. Yep. Okay. So... The fact that Flair is retire, retiring and a 73-year-old man is getting in the ring and it's his swan song and it's an event and it's a celebration. No, that's not enough, bro. We, we got we to gotta shoot an angle. Okay, bro. So we're going to shoot an angle. Jay Lethal trained him and even wore Ric Flair socks and was Ric Flair was his idol and him and Flair are goofing around during training and everything. There's footage all over the internet. But then Lethal X Flair, if there's a place on the card, and after training him and going through all that, Ric Flair tells Jay Lethal, you're an opening act kick, kid. Oh, okay, so now Ric Flair's the heel because this guy just trained him, and this guy just wanted to be on the card. So now Ric Flair is the arrogant heel. 73-year-old guy who's retiring is now a heel. So now here comes Jeff Jarrett, all dressed in white, wife all dressed in white, goes to help Ric Flair up. Ric Flair tells him, F you and your dad. So now if I wasn't sure before, now I really know Ric Flair's a heel. Because he's telling Jeff, who's trying to help him up, go F you and your dad. What 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 do we do? We bloody the 73-year-old. We get blood all over everybody's white clothing. But, bro, this was the worst part to me. This is like, I, I swear, I'm watching this and I'm like, you guys are just clueless. You know, you, 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 you don't want to give the Attitude Era credit. You don't want to give me the credit. Vince was the filter and all that bullshit that everybody talks. And to this day, they still don't understand how real people react. So, bro, what's the next scene? Flair gets bloodied. He's a bloody mess. Andrade is not there. The next scene is the contract signing. So there's Andrade standing next to 73-year-old Ric Flair, his father-in-law, two feet away from the two guys that bloodied him. Now think about it. John, you're married, right? Yep. 
Okay, th- think think about think about some thug bloodying your father-in-law, and now he's standing two feet away from you. Th- think about that. Think about that. So, of course, now there's the contract signing. You you beat the shit out of my father-in-law. You beat you know you bloodied a seventy-three-year-old man. But I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sign the contract, the, bro. They are so clueless. That's what I when I talk about the wrestling bubble, they don't know how people would react and what they would do in real life situations. If that were a shoot, and they want us to believe this is all a shoot, that's what they want us to believe. The contract signing would have never taken place. The the first time. Andrade would have saw Jared and Lethal, it would have been over. The the first time he laid eyes on them, it would have been over. But when when I look at all the all the years of experience of Ric Flair and and Jeff Jarrett, like you guys don't get that. You you got you guys really think that if somebody bloodied somebody's 73 year old father in law, they're just gonna sit at a table across from you. Like are you? Th- that's why I am not a fan of the business. That is why I don't respect the business. That is why I don't respect a lot of people in the business. Because you know why? You know what that does, bro? That makes other people look at our industry and laugh. Because everybody, everybody like Vince Russo, who's not a wrestling mark, everybody is saying, "Why doesn't Andrade kill him?" That, that, that that's what everybody's saying. Why, why isn't he killing him? And bro, that, that, that's the part of it where th- that's why the ratings are where they are. That's why the audience has disappeared. The, the wrestling business, bro, it has not grown up. It has not matured. It has gone backwards, and even guys with the knowledge and the experience of Flair and Jarrett don't even understand how to do this the right way. And it, it, uh, it bro, it, it just it blows my freaking mind. What do you think about now everyone is reporting that Vince McMahon has been filtered for the last few years? What do you think about that? Because all of a sudden, remember, he was the great filter for you, and now all of a sudden everyone's reporting that – he had been filtered for all these years, bro. Because no, bro, listen, I I am telling you, and I don't need to tell you this. Vince McMahon is great at a lot of things, a lot of things. You cannot give Vince McMahon a blank sheet of paper and ask him to write a television show. He is not great at that. That that's not his forte. That's not what he does. I feel the same way about Eric Bischoff. You know, I work with Eric on a business level, bro. I suck at business. I've got no problem saying I suck at business. I don't want to be in charge of anything. I don't want people under me. I suck at politics. All I want to do is write. I, I am a writer. I stay in my lane. But that's the thing, bro, in wrestling. Everybody wants power. How do you get power, bro? Well, I could do this. I could be the business guy and I could write the show and I could be talent relations and I could be head of creative. And you you try to accumulate more and more and more to gain power. In the meantime, bro, there's probably one thing you're really, really good at. And that's what I concentrated on doing in my career, what I knew I was good at. I didn't want to become something I wasn't. Vince McMahon could never write a television show from scratch. You could call him my phone. You, you could say whatever the frig you want to say, bro. He, he was incapable of writing a television show. I, I think people lose sight of the fact, uh, John, Ed Ferraro was a professional television writer. Ed Ferrara was writing Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Ed Ferrara was writing Weird Science. He was doing that shit before he went to the WWE. So when he came over and started working with me every single day, 
and was teaching me how to write a television show. You just don't know how to write a television show, bro. Tony Khan doesn't have a clue of how to write a television show. Right, Writing a television show is not booking a wrestling card. It is a television show. Vince McMahon did not know how to write a television show. The only reason I knew is because every day I was getting taught by a legitimate professional television writer. That's how I learned how to write a television show. And like I said, you know, you look at Tony Khan and AEW, this guy don't have a clue, bro. He's booking, well, Jericho against so-and-so, that would be a really good match. And we'll let that go 20 minutes. And Dave Meltz is going to give it five stars. Here's the only problem with that though, bro. It's on television. And, and the mass audience doesn't give a shit about a five-star, 20-minute match. They don't care, bro. So, you, you know, you, you, you've got a television audience that you have to write for if you want them to watch your show. If you don't know how to write for them, they're not going to watch your show. Bro, I, I remember everybody, everybody, bro, when NXT moved off of Wednesday nights and they were talking about the number that AEW was going to do. And I, I, you can go back and look at my shows. I said, bro, they're going to have a hard time breaking a million viewers every week. I don't care if NXT is on that night. If they aren't on that night, they're going to have an issue getting over a million viewers. And where are we, bro? Because the same exact people are watching that show every single week. They're not growing their audience because the television viewer doesn't give a shit about long matches, doesn't give a shit about five-star matches, and most importantly, bro, they want to believe what they're seeing. The minute they don't believe what they're seeing and they start laughing at the product, they're gone, bro. They're gone because they feel now, they feel now like, bro, this is really insulting my intelligence. That's it, bro. You know, that, that that's in a nutshell. Yeah. There were about 976,000 for the week. Always. So, yeah. there, are, there always is. Yep. Back to Royal Rumble. We have the LOD, Hawk and Animal, the Legion of Doom, defeating the New Age Outlaws, Billy Gunn, and Road Dog by disqualification. And this was for the tag team title. So the New Age Outlaws retain their titles. Match goes eight minutes. Decent match here. Really just kind of setting up what would become like a, a big push for the Outlaws. I know the tag team champs. I know they beat LOD before, but this is kind of like their big push. And you're using LOD to really get them to the next level. Bro, it's so hard. People don't understand, man. I, 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 um, I, uh, I came to this a couple of times in my career, bro. When somebody is so over, and an an icon and a legacy, and they've done everything, man, it is hard to book for them. What, 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 what? The LOD, uh were so over at one point in their career, what could you possibly do to ever sustain that for decades and to get them for the next level? It is so difficult. Bro, when I went into WCW and Goldberg had, had a streak of 800, 800, 800 and 0, what do you, how do you follow that up? What, what what is he possibly going to do to follow up never losing a match? The only thing you could do is turn him heel. Okay? When, when you've got a sting, what are you possibly going to do with a guy that's been on top for so long? And that was the beauty of working with Sting when at TNA we did Joker Sting and all that. Yep. Sting wanted to keep reinventing the character. Like Sting understood, like, bro, I've I've done everything. Like, what, what, what can I do? And 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 that's why, you know, a Goldberg turns heel or a Goldberg. Or a uh, you know sting becomes a uh, you know clown sting. 
because they've they've reached such a height in their career that there's only one place to go, bro. It's like a boxer, man. It's like, you know, if, after Tyson reached this pinnacle, after Ali reached this pinnacle, like there's only one place to go. And I think that was the spot really that LOD, you know, was really in a, at this point, not to mention the issues that Hawk was really, really having at the time that, that, and, and that becomes part of an issue now when you're trying to book for the guy. So the next match is Stone Cold Steve Austin winning. So the Royal Rumble is not the main event, but it's the semi-main event. Stone Cold Steve Austin wins the Royal Rumble in 55 minutes, 25 seconds. He now is going to be having a WWE Championship match at WrestleMania 14. He won by last eliminating The Rock. So interesting, 30-man battle royal, last eliminating The Rock. A little bit of uh, foreshadowing for what's to come for those two. That's what it seemed like to me. Yeah. Yeah, bro, you know, it's funny because we had a conversation yesterday about bro there were when you look at the time frame that i was there and that i was really writing there there was really a handful of people in the title scene so a lot of times bro we had these matches over and over and over again and somebody said you know asked me yesterday bro the same thing is happening in the wwe now you know, where it's Lesnar and, 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 uh, and reigns and like, nobody cares because we've seen it so many times, but yet we cared when we saw Austin and rock five times, you know, what, what's the difference. And bro, it's so simple because when we were writing there, that used to get brought up all the time. Oh my God, bro. How, how could you guys have Austin and the rock if that's what we want to do at WrestleMania, that used to get brought up by the traditionalist all the right. time. And Ed and I would say, by the time we're ready to do it again, there will be another story. People will be interested and it will feel like a new match. So it doesn't matter how many times you do it, bro. It, it matters as to what is the story going into the match. And that's what we were able to do. But if you're just going to throw, you know, Reigns and Lesnar out there every time with no build and no story, yeah, bro, people aren't going to care. That's the value of writing and having a good story, man. It's true. People are always interested in Rock Austin, no matter how many times. Uh, it Absolutely, was yeah. man. Yeah. So just quickly, I want to run through the, the participants. So I'll go from 1 to 30, but I'll do it quickly. Cactus Jack, Chainsaw Charlie, Tom Brandy, The Rock, Mosh, Phineas Godwin, 8-Ball, Blackjack Bradshaw, Owen Hart, Steve Blackman, Dela Brown, Kurgan, Mark Merrow, Ken Shamrock, Thrasher, Mankind, Goldust, Jeff Jarrett, The Honky Tonk Man, surprise appearance, Ahmed Johnson, Mark Henry, Skull, Kama, Snowfall Ooh. Steve Austin, Henry Godwin, Savio, Farouk, Dude Love, Chains, and the 30th guy in was Vader. Final four, Dude Love, Farouk, Rock, Steve Austin. The final two, of course, Rock and Austin. And then uh, Austin Lee, Austin eliminates him after a stunner and then throws him over the top at the end. So that's the match. Was Steve Austin the focus? Because it seemed like going in, he is the total focus. Everybody wanted to attack him. Everybody wanted to take him out. Everybody wanted to avoid getting beat up by him in a stunner. So it seemed like everybody was a focus. Was, see, was bro, see, to me, the focus was the story. The focus was Austin McMahon. I, I mean, that was the, the focus and that was the story. And every everything was going to trickle down from that story. So that story was really more the focus than just Austin because whatever was happening during that story, that was going to drive the narrative. So that that was the most important. To me, pretty good uh, Royal Rumble. Kind of predictable that Austin was going to win, but it's almost like he's got to win. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, like he's no, the most over guy. Bro. No, no, bro. Listen, I was I was the king of swerves, but you know when you got to give the people what they want. Yeah. Like, okay, you 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 got to put Austin over like that. That was one of those times, and you know when 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 it's time to put somebody over, bro, you got to put them over. That that's what the people wanted. That's what we gave them. That's what we needed for the storyline. So Austin wins. He's going to obviously wrestle Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 14. But before that, we have the main event. Shawn Michaels with China and Triple H defeated The Undertaker in 20 minutes. A very good match here in a casket match to retain his WWF title. Interesting thing is here, 
Michaels injures his back on a bump going to the outside. Did you guys know about this or did you find about it afterwards? Because this was a pretty severe injury to Michael's back. Uh, yeah, bro. I don't think I, I I don't remember, man. I don't I don't remember how soon we found out about it or how early we knew the severity about it. I don't know if everybody believed the severity about it. I, I don't know. There was a lot politically going on at that time, bro, where Austin was starting to be the guy and Vince was starting to kind of kick Sean to the curb. Yep. And, and Sean did not like that. So all of a sudden, the back injury became a big thing. And I, I mean, to this day, bro, I honestly could tell you, I, I couldn't tell you how much Sean was really hurt and how much he was just trying to make Vince's life difficult for the way Vince was treating him at the time. I couldn't tell you. Did you know that Austin Michaels was on the docket for WrestleMania 14 at this point? Oh, yeah, headliner? probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're writing it, you know going in, okay, Austin's got to win, and we got to get Michaels to the point where he wins, and he's going to be the champ. So that's the head, the headliner. That's what we're Yeah, by, by Royal Rumble, January, we know that's going to happen in March. Yeah. So how is Michaels going to be Undertaker here? He's going to have Kane. DX comes down. They interfere in the match. Kane actually beats a DX. So you kind of think he's on Undertaker's side for a second, and he's, but he's with Paul Bearer. So it's one of the things where you're kind of like, what the hell's going on here? Then all of a sudden, Kane attacks Undertaker, throws him in the casket. Shawn Michaels gets the win nefariously. So he didn't really beat Undertaker. Kane really beat Undertaker. And, and again, we were able to do that because the story leading up to it, because I'm watching that now. And what, what Paul Bearer and Kane are doing is they're trying to go Taker into a match and takers whole thing is i will not fight my brother i will not fight my brother i will not fight my brother so yeah that makes perfect sense in the kane character to lay out dx and then turn his sights on his brother who will not fight him even though he wants to fight him that's why bro when you have stories and characters everything makes perfect sense that's not it, though. After Michaels wins, Kane makes sure he padlocks the uh, the casket, takes an axe, destroys it, rolls it to the, uh, you know, towards the entrance way, and then they light the damn thing on fire. Supposedly Undertaker inside, obviously he's really not, but for all intents and purposes, he's lit on fire, and Kane just killed the, <laughs> the Undertaker right there. I mean, quite a sight to see. Pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, bro, that was the beauty of writing for the WWE. You, you could write anything and you knew it would it would get produced. Uh, I mean, that that was that was the beauty of writing for them. Whereas other companies I wrote for, like there were limitations and, and that eliminated some things that you knew they weren't going to be able to pull off, especially TNA. But that was the, that was the beauty of being able to write for the WWE, bro. They, they could they could do whatever you wrote. So after they kind of put the fire out, they open it up to see Undertaker's dead body. Nobody's in the casket, and you hear Undertaker's voice say, Kane, until our cross pass again, I shall never rest in peace. So it gives you a little bit of a tease, like, oh, shit, now it's on. Now he's going to want to fight his brother. You yeah, know? yeah. and I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering when, as it relates to TV, how long before we actually saw Taker again? I'm just curious. Wow, that's a good point. I'm trying to think if he didn't return again until Mania, because I know he's not on the No Way Out pay per view. I wonder if if yeah. uh, I'm gonna find. I, I, like I said, bro, with my uh, on Russo'sBrand.com every two weeks, I do an Attitude Era show, and I'm 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 between Survivor Series and Royal Rumble, so I'm I'm getting there, so I'll be able to find out for myself. Yeah, but I know it was like a big thing, obviously, with uh, like the next pay per view that Kane was gonna face Vader. And, and Undertaker wasn't around, and you know he was going to, you know, get a win before the big Undertaker match at WrestleMania. But I know the big build obviously is Kane finally versus Undertaker at, at yeah. Mania. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, it actually it says Undertaker would not return to action until WrestleMania. So I guess that was his first match. That 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 was his go. return yes. WrestleMania. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Today yeah. he would he, he, he today he would return the next week. <laughs> Not good writing though. That's not intriguing. It's not doesn't exactly. get your interest. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And it's not real. Yeah. So overall though, were you happy with the show? I know you're just like, okay, on to the next one, but were you happy? Because Austin wins. He's the crowd absolutely loves it. 
Undertaker and Kane is set, and Michaels is going to be the champ. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, where we need to be. You know, that's all. I mean, we, we write the show. Uh, they deliver the show, and we're right where we need to be going into WrestleMania season. So let's head towards the plugs. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Two Man Power Trip. Check out the website tmptempire.com. Vince, what do you got? Yeah, guys, just go to channelattitude.com. Everything that I do, you can find there, russosbrand.com. Um, all my shows, just go to channelattitude.com. Nice, great stuff. As always, Vince, thank you, and thank you, everybody, for listening. See you right back here next time. Have a good one, folks.